Right, so courtesy of John Prosser, we have renders of the redesigned M1X Mac Mini and there are a few interesting changes that I want to delve into. On the whole, I do like this new design because obviously you might have seen the internals of the M1 Mac Mini, but basically the actual computer is way smaller than the actual body of the Mac Mini because Apple Silicon is pretty space efficient. And so I do appreciate the slimmer design and it does remind me of the first generation Apple TV. But now let's delve into my issues with these renders and that begins with the plexiglass top. So basically instead of the all metal construction we have today, the new Mac Mini could have plexiglass on the top. Now I have no idea why Apple is doing this, I would appreciate having an all metal enclosure that's matte. Now John does say that it could be referring to a two tone finish, but why are we having colours on a Mac Mini? Because I feel like with a desktop especially, a Mac Mini, it doesn't make a ton of sense to have colours in my opinion. Also do remember this is the prosumer Mac Mini and so I highly doubt it's getting colours because obviously the colours and the white bezels are for the more fun entry level consumer Macs and the serious looking black bezeled space grey edition Macs are going to be for the prosumers and so again I do doubt we'll see new colours with the Mac Mini. Now this frankly is not a massive issue at all but I think my next issue definitely will because as you can see there are four Thunderbolt ports on this Mac Mini which is great but they're very very close to each other to a point where it's pretty much impressive practical to have those ports as close as they are. I mean for reference here's the iMac Pro's layout and as you can see there is even spacing between the Thunderbolt ports and there's a reason why because most dongles and adapters are super thick and you definitely won't be fitting four different adapters at the same time with these ports because they just won't fit. And so what's the point of having four Thunderbolt ports if you can't use them together? That just makes no sense. Now the render artist on Twitter did tell me that apparently John did provide him with images of the ports and this is how they looked in the image. So yeah, apparently Apple's doing that for some reason but personally I think this might be some sort of prototype and the final version will come with ports properly spaced out because if this actually ends up happening with the final version, this is gonna be a disaster. But guys, that's not even the worst part because as you can see there is no headphone jack on this Mac Mini and that makes absolutely no sense. Now yes, I know Apple's been removing the headphone jack with the iPhone and the iPad for the last few years, but they're yet to do that with any Mac and even if they were planning to, I highly doubt the Mac Mini would be the first one to lose it. Now why do I think this? Well, the headphone jack needs to stay on the Mac Mini because obviously you need to connect peripherals and more specifically external speakers because the internal speaker on the Mac Mini is absolutely trash and I highly doubt people are going to be using that on a daily basis and so yes, for a Mac that relies on peripherals, you need as many ports as you can get on the Mac Mini and so the headphone jack has to stay and if Apple was thinking of removing the headphone jack in any of their Macs, it should be the MacBook Air or the 24 inch iMac since they have pretty good speakers but also average consumers probably have AirPods and so they can rely on the wireless technology and they don't need a headphone jack. But a prosumer focused Mac Mini needs as many peripherals as Apple can fit and so yes again, I highly doubt this will be the port layout we end up getting. However, to note, I don't disagree with everything in this render. I think there are some things that do make sense, like the magnetic connector from the iMac coming to the Mac Mini. Now, in case you're wondering, I don't think we'll see an external power supply with the Mac Mini purely because it is thick enough to have an internal power supply. And also, you can see in the render, the Ethernet port is built into the Mac Mini, and that does make sense because I believe 10 gig Ethernet requires more space for cooling, and so it can't fit into the actual power brick, much like the iMac pickers that comes with gigabit ethernet instead of the 10 gig option available on the current mac mini which i'm assuming the new one will have support for too oh and also i forgot to cover this but the ports themselves are exactly the same as the ones available on the current space gray mac mini so you get four thunderbolt ports two usb a one ethernet and hdmi also on the bottom of the machine we have a vent for the fan and apparently there's going to be one, which feels a little weird because the M1 iMac has two and this is going to be a way more powerful SoC and so just one seems a little inefficient, but maybe Apple surprises us and one fan is enough 
for this M1X Mac Mini. Now the final little thing to note about these renders are the rubber strips instead of the rubber feet. That's a change we saw with the new iMac and apparently that should be carried over to the rest of the range too. Now that concludes pretty much everything John told us, but there are a few other details to note. Number one, we should see the M1X SoC. This will be a 10 core CPU with eight power cores and two efficiency cores, and then a choice of 16 or 32 cores for the GPU. As for price and availability, I'm expecting this M1X Mac mini to start at $1,100, much like the outgoing Space Gray Intel Mac mini. And also in terms of availability, I think we should see this at WWDC and then it'll be available to buy in July because we have heard about the next Apple Silicon processor going into mass production as we speak, gearing for a July release. And obviously with the iPad Pro and iMac, they were announced on the 20th of April, but they were only available to buy in store on the 21st of May. So expect a pretty similar delay with the M1X Max that we can expect at WWDC. But let me know in the comments below, what are your thoughts on this massive redesign for the M1X Mac Mini? Anyways, make sure to like and subscribe for the latest Apple news and rumors. Check out the video in the icon above about the M1X MacBook Pros. And on that note, I'll see you guys in the next one. See ya peeps.